Describe this place. What does it look like? A lot, a lot like the place I was at this morning. Mm -hmm. Describe it for me. Big tall trees. Tell me more. And there's a river. Mm -hmm. Just surrounded by trees and the river. And there's a waterfall. How does this terrain look to you? So. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Look all around you. What else do you see there? Look at the details. Perhaps birds or animals. Describe everything you see and feel. What's around you? Describe what you're seeing. It just came clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm at the river. Mm -hmm. I'm at the river's edge, and there it's a it's a fairly wide river mm -hmm. with stones at the edge. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. I may be fishing. Mm -hmm. Look down at your feet. Where are your feet? Mm. Are you in the water on the side? I'm on the side. Mm -hmm. What are you wearing in your feet? Anything? Moccasins. Moccasins. And how are you dressed? Look at your body. What are you wearing? The more you talk, the more you'll see. Are you male or female there? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you would know if, when you have a body. Imagine you have a spiritual mirror in front of you. Take a look at yourself. What do you look like? I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. What are you wearing? Leather. Mm -hmm. Their skin. Tell me more. I'm just there admiring this beautiful place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is our land. Mm -hmm. me more. <laughs> What's going through your mind?
this is our land that needs to be preserved just like this so the trees live and the river lives and the fish in the river live why would they want to do that I know what's coming Tell me what's coming. <laughs> Destruction. <laughs> Who's coming to destroy this area? <laughs> People who don't love this land. <laughs> People who see it as <laughs> something to exploit for their own greed. <laughs> Do you know these people? No. Have you heard of them? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. They are well known. Tell me about these people. Who are they? <laughs> How have you heard of these people? It was told to us in prophecy for many years, for many generations, that this would be happening. That it was up to us. We had to preserve the land if we wanted a land left. We had to be the ones praying for the land, praying for the water, praying for this, the next generations so that they would have a place to call home, so that they would have the trees, <laughs> and they would have everything they need. It was spoken to us in prophecy. It comes to us in dreams. Do you feel the time is near? Is that why you're there? What do you feel in your heart is happening now? I think I'm here to pray for the water. Mm -hmm. To give a blessing. How do you give the water the blessing? Just to be in gratitude for it, to take it in, into my being, and to give gratitude in return. To speak to the water, to let the water speak to me. Does the water speak to you? The water speaks to me. What does it say to you? We are here. We are here for you. Wonderful. We are here for the next generations. But you must protect us. You must know that we are a resource that is for all. It is not for the few, it is for all. We will not be abused. We will not respond to the abuse. We will respond to those who love and respect us. Do not fear for the next generations. We are here for those next generations. We know they need our presence. We know they need our purity.
What happens when someone does something to make the water impure? Is there a way for the water to heal itself? The water has been healing itself since time immemorial. The water regenerates. Is the water alive? The water is definitely alive. The water is the essence of this planet. This is the water planet. We live on the water planet. We are the water planet. Water comes in many forms. It comes in steam, clouds, ice. What can we do to help the water even more? When you take a glass of water in, thank the water for being there for you. When you're driving in the car and you pass over a body of water, thank the water for being there. When you go to the ocean and you enjoy a nice walk on the beach, you thank the water for being there. Thanking the water changes the consciousness just the reciprocation of the human to the water and the water to the human. The water knowing that there is a human that is aware of this connection. This keeps the water in balance and keeps the human in balance with the water. Without water, where would the human be? Mm -hmm. speaking blessings and thanks to the water and not just taking it for granted and saying, oh, I'll just have a drink of water. No, being conscious and aware of the water. The water has been here on this planet for how long? And it is still here. And it be, keeps being recycled and recycled. Mm -hmm. But don't take it for granted. Very good, thank you. So I'd like for you now to close that scene and let's move on to the next scene of your life in that lifetime. Tell me what's happening. Where are you? Well, the scene has changed. It's, I'm not in the trees. I'm walking along a dusty road. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Describe it's, it. It's dry and desiccated. Mm -hmm. I'm with a group of people. Who are these people? What do they look like? My relatives. Mm -hmm. How many are you? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Where are you walking to? We don't know. We're walking. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything with you? Our belongings. Mm -hmm. So let's fast forward and see what happens on this journey.
Describe to me what's happening. What are you experiencing? I'm seeing a man, an authority man, an authority figure. Mm-hmm. What does he look like? Stern. Is he on foot? On the road? On horseback? On horseback. Mm hmm. Who is this man? Military. Mm hmm. What does he have to do with you and your relatives? We have to go. Are you going with him? No. But we have to go. We have to keep walking. Fast forward that scene and let's see where you go to. Where do you end up? Your teepees. Mm -hmm. Where are these teepees? It's kind of an open space surrounded by trees. Mm -hmm. That it's is. A, it's a temporary place. It's mm -hmm. it's. It's not the place that we would create for ourselves. It's created for us mm -hmm. as a prison. Are there others of you like there? Yes. How many do you see around you? Maybe hundreds. Does this place have a name? Do you call it anything? Mm. Place of sorrows. Place of sorrows. Tell me more about this place. What happens here? We're watched, we're guarded. We cannot be free. How do you provide for food? That's a good question. Are there places to drink?
our people are dying. There is not enough of anything. <laughs> and the people who said they would bring it to us, where are they? Where is what they said they would bring? Our people are dying. <laughs> Anything else important in that scene? around. <sighs> I went to tend to the old and the sick. Give them comfort, comfort as they pass. Teach them the ways that they can stay alive if they choose. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? Forty. Mm -hmm. What did he? What are you known as? What is your name? Mountain child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> that is who I am. Mm -hmm. So mountain child, let's close that scene now and let's go to the last scene of your life in that lifetime. Move forward to the last scene of your life and tell me where you are. Look around you. What's happening? How old do you feel there? Sixty-five. Mm -hmm. Tell me where you are. I'm in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. I found peace. Who's around you? Children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. They are taking the teachings that I gave them and carrying them on. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's all been worth it. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, Mountain Child, take your last breath in that lifetime. Transition out of that body and tell me where you go as you leave that body.
Where does your soul go? It's like a blue space. Mm -hmm. Describe this space for me. All I'm seeing right now is blue. Mm -hmm. Just blue and vast. Mm -hmm. And as you're seeing this blue space, it's dark blue, very dark, dark blue. blue. Mm -hmm. I want you to think back at that life as mountain child and tell me what was the purpose of that lifetime? Healing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel you accomplished it? Yes. Mm -hmm. What lessons did you learn? Healing is everywhere. It's all around. It's in the earth. It's in the water. It's in all of nature. Mm -hmm. Healing is within. And tell me how it is that you are affecting Susan now, in this lifetime. She's a healer. Mm -hmm. She's always been a healer. What can she learn from you? I'm with her every step of every day. Connecting with the earth as she goes in her garden. As she stops by a river, I'm there. As she walks on the beach, I'm there. Working with the native people that she loves. I'm there. She goes to the redwoods. I'm there. I'm with her every step of every day. How have you influenced her as this Native American in her life? in this life. Helping her connect with earth and sky and water and stones and the animals. Teaching her the way. She had no one to teach her. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother was gone. It was my job. There was nobody else teaching her. Do you bring the Sasquatch to her? Sasquatch, bring the Sasquatch to her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a mountain child, were you with the Sasquatch? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Were they visible to you at that time? Visible and invisible, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
Did you receive teachings from them? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They shared everything they knew with me. Can you tell me what you can share with me today about them? They are with you as well. Tell me more. Finding the connection in the heart space. Finding the connection in the heart space and in nature. Being quiet, being connected with nature, and trusting, and listening within. How can you tell whether it's a Sasquatch or your own higher self? Well, Sasquatch have a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Is that why they play with her drum? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Who is the one that plays with her drum? A little one. A little one? Does he have a name? It's a she. Ah. What is her name? Oh, what can she call her? Mary. Mary. But not like the mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. but Mary, as in Merry Christmas. Mm. Because she is Mary? Yes. Uh huh. What would Mary want Susan to know? Keep playing. Mm -hmm. Does she like the music? Yes, mm -hmm. but keep playing, not as in music, but being playful. Being playful. Be playful. Mm -hmm. Are the Sasquatch playful? Very playful. Mm -hmm. They like to imitate people. Hmm. So they're like natural comedians? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will any of them ever appear for her? Well, she's got to get out of the house. <laughs> mm. So she needs to be outside. Yes. Okay. Very good. There by the river would be a good place. Very good. Is there anything that they would like for her to bring them? Well, what would she like to play with? Mm. There you go. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much. Take a deep breath in now. Let me connect directly with your higher self. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Why did you show Susan that lifetime of this Native American? She feels the connection so deeply. Mm -hmm. Is she still grieving? Oh, yes. 
Mm-hmm. How can you help Susan today with this grief? <sighs> Does she need to carry around this grief any longer? <sighs> it's not hers. Mm-hmm. No, she does not need to carry the grief around any longer. Mm -hmm. Would you begin rewiring her so that she can disconnect from that part of that life and focus on the appreciation instead? (sighs) Knowing that when (laughs) this mountain child died, she knew that she accomplished what she needed to accomplish, that her life was had meaning Can we focus on that place Can you tell me if there's anybody from that lifetime that is in her life now Uh uh-huh. The man on the horseback. Mm -hmm. A son. Is one of her sons? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that why he keeps away? Yes. Mm -hmm. He is ashamed of what he did. Mm -hmm. If he is, it wasn't right. So if he is so ashamed of what he did, he must have come here to pay off some karma, did he not? He has not acknowledged that yet. Mm. He has not realized that yet. So how can we help him with that today? That is up to him. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that Susan can do Prayers, perhaps. Forgiveness. One wants restorative justice. One wants revenge. One wants things to be made right. Mm -hmm. One wants to seek balance. So is that what she's doing with him now? Without knowing it? One wants to ask this genocide that was perpetrated, how can that be made right? The experience is over 500 years and more. How can that be made right? Carrying the grief of over 500 years of genocide, how can that be made right? How can that be just released? I would think that there are many souls that have died along the way that are trapped here. Indeed. Is there a way today that we can begin filling those souls with light and sending them home. Yes, let's do it. So I'd like to call in the Christ light 
the strongest light there is. And I'd like that Christ light to begin filling the souls of the, all of those natives that have died in this genocide. Filling their hearts. What you envision as these souls are released from this plane? Describe it for me. Describe the exodus. My hands are buzzing. Mm -hmm. And the stones in my hands are buzzing. Mm -hmm. Describe what's happening as this Christ light fills the entire nation. What do you experience? <laughs> it's just the light hitting all of that depth. Mm -hmm. The very depth of all of that that's been held on to. <laughs> Tell me what that looks like from a spiritual side. Just uh, gray, deep gray. Mm -hmm. Let's fill that deep gray then with that light. Increasing that wattage, making them pure white. Filling their souls with that pureness. As you witness this, tell me what it looks like. The light is hitting them. Mm -hmm. Allow that heart, their hearts to be healed and releasing that pain directly back home. Tell me what happens now. It's so vast, I can't describe it. There are pockets here and there where people have released, and pockets where they're still holding on. Mm -hmm. Let's keep putting more light into those areas. And some pockets are black. All right, let's keep filling them with light. Let's turn on even brighter that light from the, from the divine, that Christ light. Keep filling them. The darker those pockets are, the more light. Let's fill this entire area, this entire nation, with that white light, calling those souls back home, asking them to release and fill their hearts. Yes. And we've moved over to Hawaii now. Mm -hmm. And there is a beacon from Haleakala and Mauna Kea and connecting Mount Shasta and connecting all across the continent of the United States and into Canada and now into Mexico and Central America and South America and connecting it all. All the injustice All the injustice. Releasing. And feeling the peace. <sighs> As the higher self 
Tell me what happens as they're welcomed home. It's about time. They're so welcome. They have been holding on for so long. Until this day, they have been holding on. It was important to hold on to the love for the earth. And now we welcome them home. They have done a very good job, a job well done. And now they can relax. Very good. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank our Creator, Prime Creator, for that beautiful release. And for allowing us to be a part of it. And I'd like for you to take this woman, Susan, back to that life in Hawaii. <laughs> and tell me where you are. Where are you? <laughs> In my bedroom. Describe it for me. It's a prison. Mm -hmm. There's almost nothing in it. What are you wearing in this place? A simple dress. Mm -hmm. What do they call you there? Queen. Tell me more about what's happening there. Been on horseback. Came to take our land. Tell me more. They will not succeed. They think they have succeeded. Why do you say that? It looks as though they have succeeded, even now. They do not know who we are. Queen, tell me who your people are. We are the people of this land. We are not going anywhere. You may take our language from us. You may think you do. 
you haven't taken our language. You may think you have taken our culture from us. You have not taken our culture. You may think you have taken our traditions and our ways of sustaining ourselves. You have not. We have the connection with the land. We have the connection with the water. We have the connection with the spirit, spirit of the land and the water. They do not. Our connection will be here. It's always been here. It will always be here. Those who are not connected with the land, as we are connected with the land, will not maintain themselves. We only have pity for them. So, Queen, let's close that scene and let's see what happens next. Move forward in your life to another important event. I'm in a horse-drawn carriage. Tell me more. I have a, an important mission to accomplish. I have to make an attempt to talk to the people who would take our land. I know they're not going to listen, but I have to make the attempt anyway. Because I am of good faith. My people are of good faith. People of the land are of good faith. So you allow yourself to arrive at the place where you're going and tell me what happens. Nobody is listening to me. Tell me more. How many are there in front of you? Many, many white men who have no ears. Mm -hmm. Is there a leader of them? He's too busy for me. I'm shuffled aside. What happens next? I've done what I could. I've done what I could to represent my people. And I allow what will naturally come about to happen to these men without ears. What decision do you make? What choice do you make? What decision that you put in your soul? I want to be alive to see what happens next. Mm -hmm. It may take many generations. It may take many more lifetimes. I will be back to see restorative justice. Very good. So Queen, I'd like for you to close that scene and let's go to another important scene in that lifetime. Some a scene that has impacted your life. I 
I'm just at my home. My home is not very fancy. My home is a beautiful little place. I have gardens. I'm relaxed. How old do you feel there? Mm. The trauma times are beyond or are, are are past. Mm -hmm. I'm living in a relaxed time. Sixties. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying life. Who lives with you? No one really. Mm -hmm. I have friends come and go. People are looking out for me. Anything significant now in your life? Hospitality. I'm still looked at as the one who gives aloha, mm -hmm. as the one who gives the hospitality. How does that make you feel? I'm still carrying on my role. Mm -hmm. How do they address you, Queen? As if I were still Queen. Mm -hmm. I'm still the Queen of my people. What, day, what name do you go by? Lydia. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use that name? That's my name. Mm -hmm. Very good, Lydia. Queen. Let's move to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Be there now. Where are you? I'm out in the open somewhere. I'm aware that the red fish have come. It is my time to cross. Just as prophecy. I'm seeing the red fish gathering all around the islands. What is the significance of the red fish? It's when an ali'i passes. Mm -hmm. It lets everyone on the islands know it's the time of an ali'i passing. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing the red fish, and it's now my time to go. I'm looking up at the stars, and I know the red fish have come, and I'm lifting off. I'm looking down at the body, and the lifetime. What was the purpose of that lifetime? To bring us all together. Did you accomplish that in your life? Yes. What lessons have you learned? Things are not always as they seem. It may seem like a difficult life. It may seem like difficult challenges. Everything has a positive side and a negative side to it. A heads and a tails. And it's the same thing. So what could be seen as torture or a grueling time, yes, 
but it's also a time of amazing growth and opportunity. We can see injustice for injustice, and we can also see it for the transformation that happens as a result of the injustice. The empowerment, the strengthening of the individual that goes through that transformation in an injustice situation. How did you grow? It was my time to step off the throne. It was the time for the throne to no longer be important to the people. The people had to learn that the throne is inside them. Mm -hmm. It is not inside the queen or the king or the elite. It is inside each one. They must learn for themselves how to be their own king or queen. Now, Lydia, how are you affecting the life of Susan? I walk with her every day. Is she meant to do something in Hawaii? Have you led her to that? When it's time for her to go to Hawaii, she will know. There will be no question, no mistaking. What is she meant to do there? Will she play a role in the restoration of the Kingdom of Hawaii? Or has she already done that today? She has been working on this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Working on it without knowing it and in the last five years working on it with knowing it. What is she meant to do now? Like a lotus flower that unfolds and unfolds and unfolds. When she goes there, it will simply unfold. Is she meant to live there? Yes. Okay. Are you guiding her with that? Yes. Very good. Is there anything that you would like to, any advice you'd like to give her today? Be patient. Keep listening. We gave you a phrase today, the third ear. People hear about the, the term the third eye. Develop the third ear. <laughs> You're developing your third ear. 
So listen. Listen. Listen for guidance. Thank you very much. Lydia, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you. Yes. And let me connect now Aloha. with the higher self. Aloha. Let me connect now with the higher self. Thank you very much for showing her that life. Can you tell me why she has so much influence of that life of Queen Lydia? Why are they so connected? Power. Mm -hmm. Susan has been experiencing power in all its forms in many, many lifetimes. The abuse of power, the use of power, what it feels like to be powerless, what it feels like to wield great power and authority. And now we understand that the power is within. There is no need for being powerful. There is no need to have power over anyone. Understanding one's own power, that's been her journey in many lifetimes. So the question is, has she completed what she came here to Earth to do, to explore? Or is she still on this journey? She's completed all of the contracts. Mm -hmm. Did she have many of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what does she need to do now? What's next? Play. <laughs> <laughs> so go out by the river and play with this with the Sasquatch? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Very Be good. merry. Be merry. Very good. Would you tell her what the purpose of her life is? is what did she come here to do? Experience. Mm -hmm. Experience and, and joy. Is she doing that? Not enough joy. Okay. So is today one of those reminders? Yes. That she needs to be joyful? Very good. Very good. Let She's me... been a very good student. She has. She's been listening. <laughs> But a student of so many things, she's worked so hard to accomplish and achieve, and mm -hmm. oh, gotta be doing hard work, and oh, gee, just enjoy it now, just enjoy. Well, she says that she has had many careers, and they never have seemed to be stable. Why is that? So many lifetimes. She wanted to experience bits and pieces of so many lifetimes and bring them all back together mm -hmm. and put them all together like a puzzle. So she needed a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of the other thing. And mm -hmm. Now we're on the healer lifetimes. Mm -hmm. We're on the storyteller lifetimes. So she keeps going from lifetime to lifetime. Yes. Okay. So can you tell her why she hasn't found a job here in Oregon? Who would want to be an employee <laughs> when one has been queen? <laughs> mm -hmm. How can you be an employee? This mediation work that she's done, it almost seems like she's learn to do this in order to help with the restoration of Hawaii. Can I, am, am I wrong? No, that's right. Mm -hmm. Is that what she trained for? Yes, so that she could bring some knowledge and information to Lydia mm -hmm. so that Lydia could get things in a different perspective or understand things mm -hmm. from a different perspective. 
So are we always working with our higher, with our other lives? Not always. But in her case, she is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what kind of work should she be doing in Oregon? Whatever she'd like to do. <laughs> Whatever would bring her joy. Mm -hmm. She could be working as a maid. <laughs> mm -hmm. She could be a bartender. <laughs> she could do anything she wants. But she's fallen now in the medical, uh, the, the health care field. Yes. She's never been trained in health care. Right. Where did that come from? Is that another lifetime? A healer. A healer. Okay, so that's what we call it. But what about finances? She worries about them. Will a healer be able to make enough money to afford her life? We are pulling in the abundance from all the realms, mm -hmm. from all the lifetimes. We're pouring it in on that location where her clinic is, on the work that she's doing. This is a phenomenal work. Mm -hmm. This is changing the world. It's transformative. She wants to know more about that in general or in specifics. How is it that uh, her new career began and why is she learning it so fast? Where is that coming from? This is the change of from the old to the new. This is a new earth mm -hmm. technique. Many the, the people who are coming now mm -hmm. to find the healing will find it in frequency and vibration. Mm -hmm. This is where all healing comes from anyway. From vibration. From vibration. And so what she's using is actually very good for healing. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Can it heal cancer, for example? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else that she needs to know to make her work more effective? Like what tone should be should be looking for mm -hmm. that will zero in on cancer? It's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. That's what we say first. Okay. And next we say it is the frequency of the earth. So you have to be in tune with the frequency of the earth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that changes, I would imagine. Doesn't it? Earth emits a frequency. Does it change? Like when one is in a bad mood, it has different vibration. Does earth a have human that? may mm -hmm. change in frequency. The earth emits a steady ah, frequency. Okay. So she needs to learn about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talking about her, her career, what about writing? She always thought of herself as a writer. And she is. Mm-hmm. She wants to be very abundant, very successful. And if she will be. <laughs> Who will be helping her with that? All of her lifetimes. Does she need to start writing now? Indeed. Very good. So I can, can I ask on her behalf for a guide that will motivate her to begin to write? Mm. Ah, Jesse is here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm Jesse, and I'm going to be positioned over her shoulder. Okay. I'm her grandfather. Wonderful. Would you do a body scan on her, please? And let's see how her body is doing.
What have you found? Well, the right upper thigh is still inflamed a little bit. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the origin of that inflammation? Do not know. Come look and see. Is that a message to her? Feels like a wound. A wound. All right. So can we go back into a lifetime to see where this wound came from? Show her that lifetime. I'm seeing a spear. Mm-hmm that hit right at that spot. Let's find out who who was the one who speared her. <laughs> so, is Susan willing to remove that spear? Yes. And not carry it around from lifetime to lifetime? Yes. So go ahead and remove that spear now. And let's send that light into it and heal it. And allow that soul to just move into the light without that injury, without that connection to the betrayal. Let me know how her thigh looks now. Healed. Very good, thank you. What else do you see in her body? Two bad knees, and one of them comes from other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. We're aware of that. Okay. Can we see where what happened in that lifetime to cause that knee injury? Mm. It was caused by a healer. Mm. Tell me more about that. As an infant, she was dropped. What kind of memory has she been holding in that knee about that incident? What does she associate it with? Healers are sometimes careless. Mm -hmm. So now that she has become a healer herself, mm -hmm. is this something that is perhaps working against her? If she doesn't trust healers, her knees, I'm sure, are reminding her. Are they keeping her from trusting herself? That's one of the reasons it's been moving forward has been an issue for her. Mm -hmm. Can we disconnect from that lifetime? Or does she still need to forgive that healer for dropping her? Let's forgive the healer. All right, so allow me now. I'm going to put my hand on your chest, and I want you to go deep into that lifetime and understand that even though you are there to heal others, you're still human. You still make mistakes. And as a human, you're learning every day. And just because you are a healer now, you don't have to hold on to this pain anymore. So I'd like for you to pull out all of that feeling of being betrayed by this healer. 
of not feeling comfortable because of what he did, of questioning the healers. Pull that all out and give it to me so I can give it to the universe. Tell me when I have it all. Okay. All right, I'm going to send that out. What we would like to put in its place? Mm, trust. All right, so let's feel that trust and confidence in yourself. Because if you don't have trust and confidence in yourself as a healer, how can you trust another? So feel those going into every bit of your body, into all of your cells, and correcting that DNA that has been moving from lifetime to lifetime. And I'm going to touch your forehead and seal that in. Let me speak now with the higher self and let me know how her knees are looking now. Very clear. Thank you. Very good. Can you find any other place in her body? wanted to know what was going on with the right side. Was that the rocks that she was carrying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that affecting her liver? Liver, liver has a lot of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it was affecting her liver. Okay. And the right is moving ahead, moving forward, mm -hmm. moving out into the world. And the rocks were just blocking her, just dragging her down. Very good. Do you see anything else that we need to take care of today? I think we're good. Very good. Do you have a final message for Susan? All as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have a message for anybody else? The time of peace is here. We are in the age of the prophecy. Stay connected with the earth. When in doubt, go to the trees, go to the river, go to the rocks, go to the ocean. You don't have to have a reason, just go. Connect with the land where you are. Daily. If you have no land, if you live on a, in a tall apartment building and you don't have land, bring a little pile of dirt in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bring it into your space and go there. It, go there to your little plot of dirt, to your little cup of dirt, and be grateful for it. And when you drink some water, be grateful for it. And be grateful for the trees, the plants, and the animals, and the planet. This is Aloha. Are we complete? Thank you so much. Wide awake feeling wonderful. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, what a session. How do you feel? Wow. <laughs> Incredible.
incredible. That was a lot of tears. <laughs> Tell me about it. They have good tears now. Yeah. How different do you feel? <sighs> Spacious inside, I guess that would be the, mm -hmm. how I feel. Yeah. Spacious. Is this something you want to share with others? Yeah. Removing the personal stuff? Sure. I think it had a lot to do with everybody, didn't it? <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I was crying. I was crying. <laughs> I was trying to hold it back. That was amazing. I've always been a good crier. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. Yeah. So tell everybody how it felt to be in hypnosis. What was this like? Uh, I, it, it didn't, I didn't feel like I was anywhere necessarily. Mm -hmm. I was here. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you experienced quite a big of release when we brought in that light. Oh. What did you experience? What did you see? What did, because um, you did like a connecting all around the earth. Yeah. I First, all I could see was just this massive gray, mm -hmm. just gray like my shirt. Mm -hmm. A lot of gray. And and then the light started coming in, and, and it took a while. It was kind of like permeating the yeah. gray. And then I could almost see like the, the whole United States, and I could see... Okay, this area is white now, and this yeah. area is a, a dark gray, and this area is black, and like pockets of different colors. Yeah. And and over here on the Pacific Northwest, it was kind of dark green and black. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Out of> trees. <laughs> um, so <laughs> maybe that's the trees. Um, so then the more light, you know, the, the lighter it got and the lighter it got. And then I could see the connection with Haleakala and Mount Kea and Mount Shasta and then all across the United States and then zip around. And um, it was just it was lighting up. That it, is amazing. Yeah. Kind of like on a, what, what it was called the, in, uh, a game, you know, yes. the, uh -huh. the lights going off and on here. What did you feel yeah. afterwards? <sighs> Uh, what a relief. Yeah. Uh, so much relief. I felt like total peace. Yeah. After that. Yeah, just calmness. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. Like like this big, uh, it was kind of like the releasing of a dam, uh, you know, uh, a huge dam that mm -hmm. had been storing all this energy and um, grief and pain mm -hmm. and sorrow and injustice and... Mm -hmm. Uh, the genocide and, and yeah. all, all that hurt. Yeah. Um, and it just... And, and and I myself, right now, compared to other sessions, I feel like my heart is just bursting. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just... I don't mm -hmm. know how you feel, but that's how I feel. Because I get things out of this session, too. Yeah. And it just feels like my heart just, like, expanded. Like, it's it's... Bigger than my chest right now, you know. It's like it's trying to make its way out. It's just like, <laughs> that's what I got from it. Wow. But it was amazing. And later, how we connected the dots that your dad was, your dad in that lifetime, and mm -hmm. amazing, amazing. I had a couple of connections before I even got here today. Well, it happens when you start when you when you make an appointment, you already start getting some of the answers so mm -hmm. people do change their questions a lot because mm -hmm. by the time you get here you that's why it's it's not a good idea to do your and your questions like months and months ahead of time because they're going to change mm -hmm. you're going to get and you were weepy when you even got here yeah yeah it already started so we had talked about what you do can you tell everybody mm -hmm. what it is that you do what I do is called bioacoustics. Um, this is a work that's been um, developed by Sherry Edwards, S H A R R Y, Sherry Edwards, in Albany, Ohio. She hears like a dolphin. Um, so she hears the tones and frequencies that our ears emit. And that's been her gift that she's wanted to um, be able to spread to other people yeah. so that other people can hear with, or can, can heal with their with tones and frequencies like she does naturally. So she's put this on a computer. Um, and so what I can do is I can take a person's voice print, um, uh, a voice recording, run it through software, and then give the tones that they're, uh, balance out the tones that are too high in the voice, and support the tones that are too low in the voice, 
and that brings about a uh, balancing effect so your body is going more into balance wow so you know we are all vibrational beings so i guess when you're out of vibration you can hear it in your voice yes and if you regulate that then it'll mm -hmm. it'll help wow excuse me oh there's a release <laughs> um so and and she's got it scientifically this is amazing. So analyzed that I mean, mm -hmm. I can I can analyze the voice down to things like uh, proteins and genomes and amino acids. That's amazing. And, and muscles and enzymes and wow, the depth of science that she's gone into is. So incredible. I have a question: mm -hmm. Do the people have to come to you? Yeah, more or less. Okay, um, so tell tell everybody what the where you're located first, and then what how do you get to you to oh, see you to do this? Well, there are a number of practitioners all over the United States okay. and all over the world. Sherry's training more practitioners okay. all the time. There are free classes. You can look online. SoundHealthOptions.com is her website. Okay. And so, um, what it looks like to come to my place is it's called biofrequencies clinic and it's uh, i have a website biofrequenciesclinic.wordpress.com i also have a biofrequencies clinic facebook page and a youtube page and um, you would come to my my house um, i would take your voice prints we do some paperwork first i take your voice prints and you go away for a little while i do the analysis and then uh, you come back and i will have some tones ready for you to try out um, and the, I put the tones on a little tone box, hmm. and then um, you listen to the tones, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they hurt. Wow. And so we have to adjust things. Like there was uh, a client of mine who was who uh, re had, had another concussion on, on the right yeah. side of her head, and so we got to a, a specific tone that targeted the um, eye muscle. Wow. When we got to that one, it was like, oh, felt like a hot spear going into her eye. So we had to stop that one and change mm -hmm. the tone. There are five or up to wow, 19 different ways that I can do a tone. Yeah. So we got that one down. And she went from in March uh, of not really being able to focus or read for f more than five minutes at a time. Uh -huh. She couldn't hold a job. Um, she could barely do her life. She had insomnia. She had extreme head pain all the time mm -hmm. and um, brain fog. And so now this is July. She just got a job. She has been um, working at the dance studio that she manages. She's been dancing and tap dancing. That's fantastic. I mean, at the end of March, she, she she never would have thought she could ever do any of this That's ever amazing. again. Yeah. So if you're interested, please contact Susan. She, I'm sure you'll be happy to take care of her. Oh, definitely. And if you would like to come see me, you know what you need to do. You need to go to albaweinman.com, <laughs> um, make an appointment there. And I am extremely busy at this time um, so if you would like to get on my mailing list to see where I'm going to be going I'm going to go all around the world traveling coming to see you hopefully close by and uh, all you have to do is get your name on that mailing list and your address so I know where you are and I'll be sending you information as to where I'm going to next and right now we are in Portland Oregon and how far <laughs> do you live from here it's about four and a half hours. Yeah. So yeah. was it worth coming here? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I hope I get to see you pretty soon. And until the next time, thank you and bye. Let me thank you. Mm, oh, wow. Thank you so much.